you know, hip hop changing from positive to negative was not a consequence of history. It was not a circumstance of history. It was nothing that just happened on its own. It had nothing to do with the changing of the times. It had nothing to do with that. It had everything to do with the fact that there are people in this particular society who wants to see us exactly where we are. And we have to, we cannot elude, elude that, let that point elude us. These are the facts. How do we know? 1967, Kerner Commission report on urban disorder. When black people said, yo, we're tired of this system. You know what I mean? The system is oppressing us. So we rebelled against the system. We burned things. We said, yo, we, we had enough. He did his little report on what caused these riots. He said, what caused these riots? He said it was young children who started these riots. And what was motivated, what motivating them was a high self-esteem and an enhanced racial pride. He said the majority of the rioters were high school dropouts but they had a higher political orientation than their peers who did not drop out. And they saw the system as their enemy, so they attacked it in the right circumstance. So, fast forward to uh, 1992. Same thing. Number one record on the radio, we had Fight the Power. Fight the Power is on the radio. Rodney King is beaten before the world. The black youth rebelled against the system again they did it again and why what primed them positive hip-hop primed them fight the power x clan brand nubian you had these groups out here who were pushing who were politically orienting black kids in the, in the right direction giving them the proper prompters that they needed so that they can respond properly to oppression all right in 1967, when the riots happened, he saw that the self-esteem and the racial pride was fueling this. So he said, how do I bring that down so that they will not riot? And what he did, he flooded the airways with ex black exploitation movies. Right. Nigga Charlie and the return of Nigga Charlie. These right. were movies. Hip-hop didn't start calling people niggas. Right. We had Shaft. We had Coffee. Black girl turned prostitute to do whatever, you know what I mean? But these black exploitation movies brought down the self-esteem and the, and, and the racial pride so that the kids will not rebel against the system of oppression. 92, the, the racial pride was back in effect. We had black kids going to Dr. Ben Yuckinen lectures. We were spending our money to go see Farrakhan speak as opposed to going to a strip club. This is where we were. The most coveted article of clothing was a historically black college or university sweater. We were motivating children towards positive attitudes and lifestyles. And when Rodney King got the beating, had responded properly. Fast forward to our day. Sean Bell is shot 50 times in the street in New York by police officers. Number one song on the radio, Like a Lollipop. Nobody do nothing. Nobody responds to nothing. Trust me. Trust me. Just like the brother, I believe it was JT, the bigger figure, who said that the, the, the label executives came to him and said, yo, brother, we need you talking about guns and whores. Right. Mm. You know what I mean? That's right. That happens. I've been in those meetings with management and had to ask me, is what you're saying really what you believe so that we'll know how to market you properly? You know what I mean? This happens. Young Buck on his album, he puts out a, he has a song on his album that talks about police terrorism. The label said, absolutely not. Jimmy Iovine said, absolutely not. You cannot put that record on the, on the uh, album because it might create an atmosphere right. that might put police officers' lives in danger. Right. So they took the record off, but they let him keep the other 14 songs on the album that talked about killing black youth. Yeah. So this is what we're dealing with. We're not dealing with a circumstance or consequence of history. You know what I mean? The environment that we're embedded in puts us in a situation where we feel we have to maneuver and play the game and, and water our message down. You know what I mean? But no, what happened was they intentionally shifted the paradigm to get us exactly where we are right now. Right now, we're feeding the prison industrial complex right now. Our kids are going to prison because they're promoting these records. They're promoting these records daily that sent us to jail. You know what I mean? It's cool to go to jail. You know what I mean? They glorify these things. and It's not the black youth. We're in a position where it's, we get, like the brother said, the choice. You know, he said, yo, I, I, chose, I chose the positive. 
so I didn't do it. But every youth is not going to take that route. I know I come from the projects, grew up in the projects all my life. You know what I mean? And we're not turning down $500,000 to say nigga. We're not going to do it because we won't turn down two hundred dollars to take a package of crack from one corner to the next. You know what I mean? We're living in a state of poverty and one of all things. So it's hard for us to make that. Our judgment is clouded. And, and they knew that the judgment would be even more clouded if they took groups like X-Clan off the radio. This is just what it is. And until we start to deal with the environment that's shaping the behavior, we'll never get to the next level. We have to confront.